And we are back at Unite Austin Live. And thank you for being with us. Uh, we're here with Jared Finder, Engines Lead for AR hey. and VR at Google. Welcome, Jared. Nice to meet hey. you. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey. So, AR, we talked a lot about it last night at the keynote. Mm -hmm. What are the big parts of uh, AR Core that we need to know about? So, AR Core is kind of Google's effort to take AR, which is something that we've been working on for many, many years. Do you remember Project Tango? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so two years ago, I was at Unite. Yep, um, I in, saw that in there. Boston, we were showing off all uh, AR could do with Project Tango. Um, and now we're focusing on bringing it to Android scale. So Android has a ton of phones out there, right? It's, and we want to get it where all of those phones could run AR. Yep. So we're starting right now. We have a developer preview. It works well with uh, Unity 2017.2 coming out. Yep. And it uh, runs right now on the Pixel and the Samsung S8. And we're going to be focusing on bringing it to many more phones. Awesome. So what's the actual, I mean, for, for people who've used Tango, I mean, I played around with Tango at Boston as well. Mm -hmm. um, what's the delta between like where the tech was then and where it's getting to now? Right, the big thing is that we don't have any uh, dedicated hardware, so we can run conceivably on any phone that we can make sure it works well. Um, so you've got the core technologies, you've got the motion tracking going in, so that lets you place an object on the table. That's what lets you kind of move around the table and be able to have that object stay there. And you've al we've also got a plane estimation, so we can actually know here's the surface of the table, it comes out to here, we give you a boundary polygon. Yep. So that polygon lets you know, like, for any kind of arbitrary, it could work for a hexagon table, for a rectangular table, what the actual boundary is, so you, you can pla make sure you're placing things on the table and not floating in space. Yep. And then a new thing that we have, we didn't have this with Tango, is light estimation, where we actually are able to uh, sample the lighting that's in the real world and make it so that the objects follow that. And so that allows you, like when you go to a dark room, the objects appear to get darker. Or when you go to a light room, the objects get lighter. And just it's all about making these objects feel like they're more real and feel like they're behaving as if they're you know, real objects. Yeah, sort of anchoring it in the real world. Yeah, I, yeah. Fi I find that part really fascinating, the light part of it. Um, you know, what, what does it actually do? Is it using part of the camera? Um, like to actually observe the pixels and where the light changes, like a like a light probe um, volume, or how does it how does it work? So it's <laughs> I'm not going to tell you all without, the secrets. Without getting into like <laughs> my, uh, my I PhD. could I could talk about the engineering side of things where it does all this special math, but basically what it's doing is that it looks at the camera image and it's able to modulate the existing lights that um, so they behave the same way along with the camera. And like the hard part about that is that the camera actually has um, a lot of auto adjustment that it's doing to make yep. sure that the images look best for oh, the you know, what you're saying, like the actual pictures. Yeah. And so we have to work in lockstep with that. If we're a frame behind, you'll see it'll look like a flash. And like yes. with everything with uh. AR, we have to actually be like fully frame synced with what's going on. If you lag behind your position by just a frame, or you lag behind on your planes by just a frame, like people will notice an object will appear to jitter. And we have like so worked really hard to make sure everything's exactly locked. So the light estimation, it takes into account like the, the real lights in the world, but also like the exposure settings on the camera. Yeah, it's looking at everything so that it looks like it is actually like a, it is like that object was real and was being photographed. Right. Um, so, so is there a big challenge for you? Like you mentioned you were working with, uh, obviously, the, the Pixel, Google's own phone, also Samsung S8. Yep. Is, is there a challenge for you with, with the hardware? Obviously, you want to get this out to more Android devices. Yeah. And some of those devices will presumably handle um, you know, auto exposure in different ways. Is there, is there a big challenge for you to kind of keep parity for those things? I mean, that's what Google is great about, right? Like Google's effort has always been to hit things at scale, to yep. solve problems for the whole world, to be able to work, run every phone. And so like that, that's, yeah, is it hard? Yeah, but that's what Google is best at. Just figuring out how to create software that works for everyone, that can bring AR really to everybody. And like, we're just, it's super exciting to me. Like AR is one of those things, you know, I was used to seeing in the movies, you see like Iron Man working with his computer. We're not there yet, that's far off, but yeah. working on little steps to get us to where you can have you know, these objects that are just interspersed with our reality yeah. and feel like it's really just another thing, another part of your world, and even though it's fully virtual, yeah. is like, that's cool, right? That's, yeah, that's the awesome. future, that, fe that feels like what we're gonna be doing.
Yeah, what's the what's the, what's some of the coolest uh, content you've seen? One of the using coo AI for the coolest things that like I've seen. Like if I want to show my mom something. Hey mom. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest things I've seen have all been like some form of interpersonal like communication. Like there's some apps that I've seen that have been about like remote help. You know, you like find a plane, when you find the plane, when you understand the world around you to be able to place objects in it. If you have like, you know, you mentioned your mom, maybe she's called you for like some computer tech support. Uh -huh. How do I do this thing? <laughs> you could have her. This has happened once or twice. Yeah, so <laughs> you could have it where through AR, you could add virtual like press this button to onto the, um, TV be like, okay, it's the button above here. And <laughs> so it actually I would be able feels to, like it's to part place of it. like objects in her virtual world. Right. That directly help her. Right. And so like that even though like for me, I've gone through this process a lot with my grandparents. My grandparents live on the other side of the country from me. And eventually it got to where I'd be like, how does this work? What are you looking at? What where are you? Are you at the left side of the TV or the right side of the TV? Um, <laughs> so and it's being like able to actually for the real see world. it to be able to actually <laughs> place and see what they're seeing and be able to place an object in there that's like, this is the part to, do, to interact with. That type of intercommunication, like that's where I feel like AR is just like huge. And it, it, it has a thing where it brings it, is the potential to just be able to like transcend like these you know, physical spaces. The fact that we're so far apart, we can still interact with each other in this, right, admittedly small helping people over the phone way, but it, that's the power of it being, vir of taking the virtual world. Like a shared experience. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, uh, you know, three years from now are the kinds uh. of uh, AR devices <laughs> that, uh, that I'll be showing off to my mom? I don't even want to hazard a guess. Like, <laughs> it feels like AR is like just really starting. You can see now that smartphone AR this year, like if you'd looked a year ago where it was, there was, Tang there was Tango. And now there's everything. We're, and so three years from now, I hope it will be like the future. You know, we'll all be flying around in cars and stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but like, I just see that smartphone AR is really becoming a thing. Are you guys and working on flying cars? Did you say that? <laughs> that is Google flying yeah. cars. No, <laughs> no. I, I, th I feel like you're going to see that like, we're going to get to a point where it's going to be like, every phone that can support AR. And so by getting in, now you can be able to make an AR app just like you make any other app. It's gonna be like, you remember GPS used to be a selling point for a phone. Now every phone has it. Yeah. You know, right now AR is kind of a selling point for a phone. And it's very soon gonna be where just every phone has it. And that's kind of what we're focusing on. Hey, so if a Unity developer wants to get started with AR Core, what do they need? They need like 2017.2? Right. So that's a good question. Uh, so it needs to be 2017.2, beta 11 or later. Like the release candidates, I think, just went out. Yep. And so it's release candidate two, I think. Yeah, I think so. And so if you download that, you go to our website. I just search Google for AR core developers. Uh -huh. It's like the first hit. And download our SDK. You can use that to build an AR core app. And we're actually right now to, to try to educate all the people here at Unite, we are doing a code lab up on the fourth floor Great. that has walking people through it, get people over that initial hump of getting everything set up, get everything started. And for everybody at home who's not had the uh, opportunity to be at Unite, they can go on the website and just pick up all the learning materials. Yeah, the, co the code lab's up on Google's Code Lab's website. Amazing. Awesome. Oh. So we're going to just roll the, the AR Core trailer to look at some of the, the best stuff that's being done with yeah. it. But thank yeah. you so much for coming yeah. in. Yeah, thanks for being here, Great to be here. Always love Unite. Let's take a look at the video.